But in what universe is it possible that an American president has his campaign chairman arrested, that's Paul Manafort, and his deputy campaign chairman arrested, that's Rick Gates, and his campaign manager arrested, Steve Bannon, and his national security advisor arrested, that's Mike Flynn, and his personal lawyer arrested, that's Michael Cohen, and his longtime political advisor arrested, that's Roger Stone, and his campaign foreign policy advisor arrested, that's George Papadopoulos, and his inaugural chairman arrested, that's Tom Barrick, just arrested today, his inaugural vice chairman arrested, Elliot Broidy, his private company indicted the Trump Organization. The chief financial officer of his private company arrested Alan Weisselberg. His foundation slash charity shut down as a fraud. That's the Trump Foundation. His quote unquote school shut down after a fraud suit settlement, Trump University. And not to mention, during his one single term as president, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five of his cabinet secretaries were referred for federal criminal prosecution in one term. We just today got the Inspector General report on Trump Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. Uh, and all the details of how that investigation concluded that Wilbur Ross lied to Congress on multiple occasions to cover up what the Trump administration was trying to do to mess with the census. And that report, again, which we just got in detail today, gives us all the details we didn't have before on this fifth Trump cabinet secretary who was referred to the U.S. Justice Department for potential criminal prosecution. In all five of those cases, all five Trump cabinet secretaries, it was the Trump Justice Department that refused to bring criminal charges despite those criminal referrals. But like, you know, widen the lens a little bit. You know, meanwhile, the lawyers who brought the cases, brought the lawsuits that the former president wanted after the election to try to get the courts to somehow overthrow the election results and somehow keep him in office, those lawyers who were acting on his behalf are all facing court sanctions and potential disbarment in at least four different jurisdictions. His other personal lawyer, not the one who already went to prison, the other one has just had his law license suspended in both New York and in Washington, D.C. for his role in making those same false claims before the court. Oh, and he himself was impeached twice. That's a record. And he's personally facing a criminal investigation under Georgia state law for interfering with elections officials in that state. We're also awaiting a potential second round of indictments derived from these allegations of a years long multi-million dollar criminal tax fraud scheme, tax fraud scheme that's already led to the indictment of his company that bears his name and its longtime CFO.